Well, hello scrappers, welcome back to my channel. Now, um, recently I did a scrap pickup at XYZ Mega Corporation and I got a whole bunch of these Lenovo ThinkPad laptops. I got dozens of them. Dozens. And you know what? There's not a darn thing wrong with any of them. They all work. Um, they've just been retired because they've issued everybody in the corporation a Microsoft Surface. I feel bad for those people because the surfaces suck. And these are really nice computers. Um, you know, they're older, but actually they're nice computers. I mean, they're i5s, and most of them have either 8 gig of RAM. Some even have 12 gig of RAM in them. Some of them have 500 gig hard drives. Some of them have SSDs in them. Um, some of them have um, the high capacity batteries. They are really nice computers. And like I said, they all work. They're all in pretty good condition. I got dozens of them. So a while back I put out a video on how to change the passwords on these so that you can get into them and use them. But I've come up with a better way, a better way, especially on these newer computers. Um, see this had Windows 7 on it. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but that's, that's Windows 7. Okay. And Windows 7 is so passe. So I've come up with a way to get Windows 10 on all these computers, and that makes them much more saleable than trying to sell them with Windows 7 on them, okay? Um, and it's perfectly legal, and it's super easy, and I'll show you how I do it, okay? Uh, first things first, we're going to do a couple things with this laptop um, before I do anything else with it. Um, I'm going to peel the asset tags from XYZ Mega Corporation off of it. Because even though I got these things, you know, legally, and they're mine now, it's just kind of sketchy to be reselling them with somebody else's asset tags on them. So we'll take the asset tags and the inventory control numbers off. And, uh, you know, no more issues with that. They're not sketchy looking now. Um, and we need something else while we've got this thing upside down. We need to pop the battery out. And inside the battery compartment, on uh, just about any Windows 7 laptop, is going to be, and I'm not going to give you a close look at it, is the uh, license number for the Windows 7 that came on the computer. Okay? So, we need to get a picture of that. So, I'm going to take a photograph of that. Yeah, but I'm going to do it off camera because you've got to get your own um, license numbers okay okay I took a picture of that with my phone so I'm going to put the battery back in okay and then the next thing I want to do while we got it upside down is I want to take the hard drive out it's super simple on these Lenovo's there's just one screw holding this cover on once you get the screw out the cover pops right off and there's a little flag here you could use to pull the drive out. Just like that. Super simple. Okay, and this one happens to be only a 320 gig drive, but a lot of them, strangely enough, have uh, 500 gig and some of them have SSDs in them. So, uh, I'll show you how we're going to get Windows 10 on this. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in so that the battery can start charging. These laptops have been sitting around for a long time. The batteries are pretty flat in them. So, while we're cloning the, the, the hard drive here with Windows 10, we'll just let that charge so that um, it'll be ready to boot up once we're done with the cloning operation. So, how am I going to clone Windows 10 legally? Well, I've got one of these here that I have done a fresh install of Windows 10 on, okay? It's, it's another one of those Lenovo ThinkPads. It's, it's a really nice computer. It's an i5. There were some i7s in the mix, but this is an i5. There were a lot more i5s. Uh, but it's a really nice computer. It's fast. It's got a lot of RAM. Uh, this is one of the ones that had the 500 gigabyte hard drive in it. And I put a fresh install of Windows 10 on this. And what I'm doing is I'm just cloning this hard drive. Now I know, I know, I know there's going to be lots of gnashing of teeth and complaining out there, but I'll explain. I'll explain. So what I've got here is a USB to SATA interface. These are really cheap. You can get these on Amazon. I'll put a link to one in the description. And we'll just plug it in here. 
set the hard drive over here on the table and we will plug in Always plug in the USB port upside down first. It's like a law. You have to. So it uh, recognizes the drive. There's actually two partitions on it. There's a boot partition and a rescue partition, I guess. So, and what we'll do is we will just close this because we don't need those. That's all the corporate crap on there. That's got to go. The Windows 7's got to go. So we've got this nice, fresh, clean install of Windows 10 here. And I've got the Seagate Disk Wizard tool over here. Now, you have to have at least one Seagate drive in the system to use this. Either in the computer or the drive you're cloning has to be a Seagate. But if you don't have Seagate drives, every drive company has their own version of this kind of software for cloning drives. So you can just download what you need. And it... It's a little slow. I'll tell you, it's a little slow. It's going to take me a while to clone the drives for all of these um, computers. But what we're going to do is we're just going to come up here and we're going to click on Clone Drive. And let's see, I'm going to go Automatic. And then it wants to know what the source drive is. So there's the source drive is disk 1. That's the one in the computer. Click next, and it's got to think about it for a couple of minutes, so I don't know why, but we'll be back when it's done thinking. Okay, after thinking about it for a while, let's come back and ask us what the uh, target drive is, and that's going to be the one on the USB cable. So, click start. It's going to remind us that it's going to delete everything on the hard drive. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Um, it's asking here to replace a disk in this machine or to use in another machine. I don't know. I, I've done it both ways. It doesn't really make any difference. It works exactly the same. Don't do a data disk though. Do one of these two options up here. Okay, either one seems to work just fine. And then we'll click next and it's got to think about it for a few more minutes. So we'll be back when it's done thinking. Okay, after thinking about it for a while again, it comes up and tells you what the, the new disk, what the disks are going to look like after cloning, and that's fine. So we just click next, and then it's got to think about it again for a few minutes. This program is really, really slow. It is one thing I don't like about it, but hey, it's free, and you know, the USB dongle is pretty cheap. So if I needed to do this in a big hurry, I could set up like two or three of these computers cloning hard drives at once and that would speed things up but I just live with the slowness of it and do something else in the background while it's thinking. We'll be back when it's done. Okay after all that thinking we finally reached the last screen and there's a button down there that says proceed so we want to proceed. Alright now this is going to take a while. I mean, up till now, it's taken quite a while. You, you've skipped over a lot of it. But now it's got to lock the C partition on this drive, on this computer, so nothing can change, so it can copy it to the new drive. So that takes a few minutes, and then it starts the copying process, which takes quite a while. So if you've got some yard work or something to do for about an hour, that's a good time to go do it. So I'm going to go do some stuff and come back when it's done because this is going to take a while. And here we are. The, the copying is in progress. It's been going on for a little while. It says it's got 36 minutes left. Usually, you know, you might get sticker shock when you read how much time is left because it starts out at like sometimes four or five hours. But I'll tell you what, that goes down really quick. It generally takes less than an hour to copy one of these disks, but really go do something else while it's happening because it takes a while. But I forgot to mention, this computer that I'm cloning the hard drive from um, has a fresh install of Windows 10 on it, but I have downloaded all the currently available updates for Windows 10 as of now on this computer. So that on the cloned hard drives, when I put them in the new machines, they don't have to download all those updates. They're already up to date. So that's, that's worth doing. Otherwise, as soon as you put 
the machines with the cloned hard drive on the internet, they're going to bog down downloading all those updates. And they're, they're just, their performance is really bad. And uh, they look like they're, they're really dogs and nobody wants to buy them. But you get all your updates downloaded uh, in the beginning before you even clone the hard drive, they're ready to go. It's a beautiful thing. So that's a top tip for you. Anyway, we got a while to wait yet. And there we are. The disc was successfully cloned. It's ready to go back into the laptop it came out of. Okay, now we can put our freshly cloned drive right back into this computer. I can never remember which way it goes. I gotta look inside that way. Oh, the rail's coming off. There we go. Tuck the flag in. And we can put this uh, cover back on it. Don't lose the screw. Put the screw back in. Okay, now we're ready for our first boot up with Windows 10 on this thing. So let's fire it up. First time in Windows 10. Okay. Look at that, there's the Windows 10 symbol. Now the first boot up takes a little while and it's got to configure drivers for all of the new hardware that it's seeing. It's like, hey, wait a minute. This is not the same computer. Things aren't set up exactly the same. I need to find new drivers. I need to rejigger everything and so that I can come up and work. So the first boot up is going to take a little while. So we'll just wait. Yeah, it's doing the getting devices ready thing. It's loading the drivers and such for uh, using this hardware that it's not familiar with, although it's pretty much the identical hardware as the one I cloned it off of. So I don't know why it takes so long, but it does. But eventually it'll come up. We'll just wait. All right, hey looky there. We booted up into Windows 10. Tell you what, I'm going to take off this Windows 7 sticker because this computer no longer has Windows 7 on it. This is Windows 10. And that's the way it's going to be from now on. Okay, so the next step. Windows is fine at this point, but we're not online yet. As we need to get it online. Now as soon as we do get it online though, it's going to figure out that it doesn't have a valid license. But that's okay, because we'll take care of that. So actually, that is online. Normally I have to put in my Wi-Fi password, but it must have remembered it from the clone machine. So it's gone online. So it's going to take a minute or two to figure out that the license is not valid. And then we'll fix that. And it'll be fully activated and licensed Windows 10. So if we just right click on the desktop and come down here to personalize. Aha! Uh -huh. You need to activate Windows before you can personalize your PC. It's figured out that it doesn't have a valid license. So we'll activate it. We'll just click on the activate now thing and we will come down here and we will say change product key. Okay, and remember, we took a picture of that product key inside the battery compartment on this thing. Now, a little known fact, at least I didn't know it for a while, is that Windows 10 will accept a Windows 7 product key and activate. It's perfectly legitimate. It's perfectly legal. Microsoft wants you to do it. So we will type in that product key. Now, like I said before, you don't get to see that product key. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to type it in. You can see the first few letters of it. Whoops. But that's about it. We'll be back once it's all in. 
So after you enter the key, you click next. It's got to think about it. It's going out and querying the Microsoft servers to see if it's a valid key, if it can activate. And look at that. Hey, activate Windows. Yes, I think we want to activate Windows. So we will activate. And then it's got to think about it for a little more. Usually this doesn't take very long. And there we go. Look at that. Windows is activated. Yes. The you need to activate Windows thing has disappeared from up at the top. We now have fully activated Windows 10 on this old computer. This is now a much more resellable computer. I'm going to have myself another yard sale in the next few weeks like I did before with the last batch of laptops I got. I sold a lot of them, made a lot of money. These are even nicer laptops. They're going to have, all going to have a fresh install of Windows 10 on them, and they're, I'll clean them all up, um, hit them with a little Windex, rub them down a little bit, get the fingerprints off the screens, you know, and the lint off of the cases, price them to move, and I'll sell a lot of them. It'll be a beautiful thing. I'll make a lot of money. So that's how you do it. It's as easy as can be. So I hope this, uh, this helped answer some questions, because I get a lot of questions about how do I get a fresh install of Windows 10 on all my laptops? And that's how I do it. It's just that simple. Just that simple. You know, here we are, activated, ready to go, ready to be sold to a new owner. All right. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, intriguing, inspirational, educational. Give the video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Subscribe to see my future videos. They're coming out fast and furious. There's going to be more in the future. Uh, press the little bell icon, YouTube makes you press, and check out my second channel where I do a lot of electronic and computer stuff there too, um, Electro Geek 64 Check that out, subscribe there too, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.